Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday, June 18th, 2017. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the information from the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. While we continue to track what is a rare situation for the month of June, we have two areas of high likelihood for tropical storm development over the next couple of days. Uh, this is a typical June system here in the northwestern Caribbean, but the one east of the Caribbean islands is not typical for this early in the season and is a rarity. And uh, this we will talk about first because it has the chance to bring impacts to portions of the southeastern Caribbean and northeastern South America as soon as Monday evening. If we take a closer look at this uh, this wave dubbed 92L here, we see what is uh, becoming rapidly a more organized system. This morning it had pretty ragged convection, pretty obviously still an open wave at the time, uh, but we've since seen this area of circular convection go up over the wave axis during the last several hours, and this is a sign of continued organization. If we look at the ASCAT pass from this morning, what we saw was a really sharp wave axis here. It did not have a closed low on this pass. We did not see a lot of northwesterly wind here, but given this sharp wind shift, it doesn't take much from this configuration to close this off into a low. And what you need for that is centralized convection over the wave axis, and that's exactly what we are seeing this afternoon. And it's possible that the low has already become closed here, and it is possible that this is actually already a tropical depression or storm, but we would need some more evidence to confirm that, such as another ASCAT pass like this that shows closed low before we're absolutely certain. Uh, but it's possible this is already a storm, and in fact the National Hurricane Center, as I'm making this video, is about to release their first ever potential tropical cyclone advisory package. This is going to be a new thing they're doing this year where they uh, issue advisories for systems that are not yet tropical cyclones in their eyes but are expected to become tropical cyclones and threaten land within the near future. And so as soon as you watch this video, you'll likely be able to see uh, that forecast from the National Hurricane Center as the system is expected to move west-northwest and impact areas near Trinidad, Tobago, and the southeast windward islands of the Lesser Antilles. And uh, given the system's small size, this means a couple of things. One is that with a structure like this, it has the potential to strengthen quickly before it hits unfavorable conditions over in the Eastern Caribbean. If we look at the microwave pass here, you can see this really small ball of convection it has. This kind of structure, though, with this little this little curling that you can see here, this, this ever so slight evidence of curvature here, indicates that if there's a low forming here with this convection around it, is something that could potentially spin up rather quickly. And so we could see a moderate to strong tropical storm form relatively quickly. Now the good news is that the system does have some unfavorable conditions ahead of it. If we look back at the visible imagery here, you'll see these milky white cirrus clouds coming out of the northwest in the eastern Caribbean and then curving around like this to the north out in front of 92L. And then you can see the, the low-level trade winds coming from east to west here underneath of all that. So these two flows are crossing here. So that's the definition of vertical wind shear that you can see there. Two, area, two layers of air moving in different directions at different speeds. And this is something that is uh, right in front of 92L's path to the west-northwest here. Now if you look at the GFS forecast, for the next 48 hours, you'll see this trough in orange that I just highlighted for you. And you'll see that it actually starts out near the Lesser Antilles and then backs away during the next two days at the same time that 92L is moving toward the Windward Islands. So as although the shear is in front of the storm, it's uh, backing away a little bit with time. And what this will give 92L is perhaps a little window prior to arriving near the Caribbean Islands to strengthen before the shear becomes too large to allow intensification. And it's going to be close here as it arrives at the islands. That'll be right about at the point that it's probably uh, starting to face shear that is uh, too strong to allow further intensification. And the question will be how strong it gets before that time. And again, there's a, a range of possibilities here with the system this small, and we could see some quick spin-up. They're also pretty fragile, so it will fall apart rather quickly, most likely, once it gets into the Caribbean. But over here, when it gets to the islands, we could see substantial impacts, tropical storm force winds, very heavy rain, and the worst conditions will likely be confined to a small area because the storm itself is small, and so the details of which particular island in here might get the strongest winds associated with this system uh, will depend very much on slight deviations in the short-term track, and so it's something we'll have to track closely um, hour by hour, as it's always hard to know with you know perfect certainty where this will go. 
this GFS forecast here probably provides a decent uh, estimate of what, what could be facing uh, these islands here as uh, the system rolls in. As the GFS has been predicting for some days now that this would spin up as a small storm. And you can see how small the circulation is here. Even for a global model, it could almost fit in here between St. Vincent and Grenada. And uh, as this comes through, again, a tight wind field, but it could be a rather potent wind field if this thing actually does develop as it looks like it's trying to at the moment, where you could have 50, 60, or even 70 mile per hour wind gusts here with a moderate to strong tropical storm if it does indeed uh, continue developing and uh, could bring a, a small subsection of islands here, very nasty winds to go along with heavy rain over a larger area here as this comes through. And so I'll have to keep, again, a close eye on this over the next couple of days. Monday evening to Tuesday morning is the likely time frame right now for the strongest impacts. And we'll see more about that timing more precisely when the NHC issues their first forecast shortly after the end of this video. Now moving on to the other system that we're watching in the Atlantic. This is Invest 93L, and this is more of concern for the United States and the Northwestern Caribbean here. We continue to see what is still best termed a giant mess here. What we have is a large area of rainfall that has been occurring from Jamaica to the Caymans to Cuba over the last 24 hours, and a very east-weighted system. Now, you might want to say that the system center is right here because you see some spin on the satellite, but don't be fooled. This is still a mid-level center with no basis at the surface. And uh, this happens a lot in convection in the Caribbean where you get these, these spinners in the mid-levels, but they usually don't, nothing much usually comes of them. The actual surface low has been northeast of Belize today. That's where this was. It's starting to open up now into this larger scale sharp trough axis in here. You can see the winds coming out of the northeast over the Yucatan, out of the southwest over the western Caribbean, and this trough axis here is going to be gradually rotating toward the west-northwest such that tomorrow you'll likely see some kind of trough that looks like this. And what we're going to see perhaps is a secondary low try to develop up here in the northern end of the trough and then whatever low is still sitting down here will gradually dissipate with time as this northern one becomes dominant. And uh, this has been forecast pretty well by the models in the last couple of days but they disagree still rather heavily on what becomes of the new low up here northwest of the Yucatan Channel tomorrow and the next day uh, and which direction it tries to go in the Gulf of Mexico is still up for debate. If we look at the European model, we'll see out to Tuesday morning here uh, that the, our trough axis has again rotated up like this, and our new low has formed on the northern end of the trough, and it is now moving in the northwest, west-northwest direction on the Euro, and it continues toward the general area of southern Texas. Now compare that to the GFS, which at the same time is located farther northeast with the trough, faster toward the north, and is moving in the general direction of the western Florida panhandle. And uh, this has been the, the split between the two models in the last couple of days. There are some models that support both solutions. Now, the question, of course, is which one will be more correct? Uh, it is worth noting that we have a very difficult steering pattern forecast for this system. This is out to Monday morning on the GFS of 500 millibars and approximate steering level here. We have a big high nosing in over Texas. So you have a high, you have a big trough over Canada. You have another Bermuda Ridge out to the east, and then you have low pressure again over the Gulf of Mexico. And this is what we call a call, C-O-L, uh, this area in between these two lobes of low pressure and two lobes of high pressure, and this is where steering currents are quite weak. And this area near the North Gulf Coast has a very weak steering currents, and it's difficult to tell often where exactly a system like this will go. Will it take the eastern flank of the uh, eastern or the western flank of the eastern ridge and move northeast or will it get trapped underneath this ridge to the west and move toward the west or even southwest at some point the wild card in all this is actually this cutoff upper low here if we look at the uh, water vapor imagery uh, we'll see this trough sitting over the gulf of mexico and this here is going to be spinning away cutting off and then backing toward the southwest toward mexico during the next couple of days which will allow an interaction potentially with 93L and whether or not these two end up rotating around each other and pulling this west is something that the European has been forecasting more than the GFS. As of recent runs, the GFS has been getting these two to interact a little bit more and trending slightly toward the European's view of things and trying to drag this a little farther west toward um, the middle of the Gulf Coast before getting yanked northeast 
or this way. Uh, so if there's any kind of trend at the moment, it's probably the GFS a little bit more toward the euro, but there's still quite a split here. The overall message, however, is that regardless of where this goes in the Gulf, it's going to be a large and spread out system and highly sheared again because of this trough you can see all the southwesterly flow here over the Gulf of Mexico this is going to continue pushing most of the precipitation and wind to the east of the low remember the low is currently right about here and yet all the action is really to the east of the center as this moves up into the Gulf of Mexico you'll see a lot of rain on the eastern side and then starting to wrap around on the northern side as well so you'll have a low here and then uh, the east and north sides will have all the weather and it will be over a large area so in a sense whether or not this goes into Mississippi or Louisiana or Texas uh, you could still get rainfall in the same areas in, in any of those tracks of course some areas like the Florida Peninsula will only get rain if the system moves sufficiently far east but areas like louisiana and mississippi may get rain regardless of whether the european or gfs is correct and so that will be the primary threat here is this large area of uh, torrential rainfall that could develop anywhere from florida uh, to louisiana and perhaps even texas later on as well if this uh, does indeed go pretty far west as the european suggests uh, here's another look at the European Ensemble Mean, which again has been very consistently uh, farther west here in the Gulf. This is another look at how much moisture will be funneling right up into Louisiana in this kind of uh, situation. Again, on the European, the precipitation area is shaped like this, and uh, dry air on the back side uh, that gets wrapped in from the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, this would not be a typical looking tropical storm, most likely, and could even be designated a subtropical storm with rains over a large area again being the heavy threat. Uh, here's another look at that from the GFS. Just one more image here showing uh, the mid-level moisture here in green. All of this funneling into Florida, if the GFS solution farther east is correct, you can see some of the moisture wrapping around on the north side toward Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. And again, dry air wrapping around on the back side. So this would not be a typical looking storm, but flooding uh, would be a big deal with this, especially given uh, the couple of days that it could sit in the Gulf trying to decide which direction to move, northeast or west here. So a lot of water is about to come down somewhere. Exactly where that water comes down, not quite clear, but a portion of the North Gulf Coast is virtually guaranteed to have a flooding threat from rainfall and high surf across the Gulf Coast is also possible with this long fetch of wind coming out of the south could cause high tides to be uh, a little bit dubious for coastal flooding. So these are going to be the primary threats from this system moving forward into early part of this week. And again, system 92L in the, the islands at this time by Tuesday morning. You can see that here on the GFS as well. So we'll keep an eye on both of these systems. Again, quite rare for June to have two simultaneous threats. There are Air Force reconnaissance aircraft scheduled to investigate both of these systems tomorrow. And uh, this one will probably be the most imminent threat to land with 93L shortly following on Tuesday and Wednesday. We keep a close eye on all of this and stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest updates. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.